Hi, thank you for watching Public Soul Podcast. Today we are very happy to have Mr. Ku Sui Yong, CEO of International Property Advisor, to join us at this interview today. Thanks, Mr. Ku, for coming. Hello, Vina. Hi. Derapers are launching 50 new condo projects with 20,000 new units that are going to add to the market. Are they launching at a bad time? Because buyers are going to be spoiled for choices. Do you think there's a mismatch between the launch and the take up asset by the business times? For the developers, they have to just go with their pipeline of construction progress and they have to launch. Um, there is no good or bad time because it, there is a five year time bar for most developers to sell out their projects. In the last eight years since the global financial crisis, we have already added 120 over 1,000 units of uh, residential properties. These are private residences. And on average, that is about 13,000 units a year. So that supply is already well above the eight to 10,000 units that we forecast for the Singapore market demand every year. So the last eight years of supply has already been well above average. Now, for this year, if we expect 20,000 units to launch, then that's about double the number that we expect the market to be able to absorb. So there will be uh, some severe competition between developers coming up because firstly, buyers have already satisfied their demands in the last eight years. Secondly, HDB supply itself has also been very strong ever since the 2011 elections and the uh, after that, the release of the population white paper showing that we are going to have a 6.9 million population. So when you put all this together, the last eight years supply actually was a little bit too high in anticipation of a strong population growth. So within the next one to two years, where are these new sources of demand? Where are the new buyers going to come from? That I think we still have to take a look. What strategies developers are going to take to clear the unsold units in the market? For developers facing a slower pace of sales, um, the first thing that they would do whenever they launch a new product or when they design their new products would be first to compete with other developers by providing better facilities, by providing higher specifications for their products, by giving the finishes, fittings and the um, interiors perhaps a higher grade of material. So, on that front, I'm anticipating and I would be very happy to see that the competition actually brings about a higher quality of finished products in the residential market. But on another hand, developers wishing to accelerate the pace of sales would be encouraging uh, property agents by incentivizing them with higher commissions to get property agents to work harder to bring in the buyers. If this uh, increase in quality plus increasing commissions for the property agents still fail to bring in sufficient sales, then I think at the end of um, this year, perhaps we might start to see a few developers cutting prices in order to compete in the market. Cutting prices would also generally lead to an increased demand because uh, some of the stretch buyers, when they see that the prices have dropped, would not be in a stretch position anymore. So three things. First, improve quality, improve finishes. Second thing, increase incentives for property agents to encourage agents to work harder to bring in the clients. And then finally, if the first two didn't generate sufficient sales, developers would have to resort to cutting their profit margins a little bit to lower prices to sell. Then what will happen to the leftover units in the market after the initial launch? During the initial launch, developers set up a budget of half a million or one million dollars um, plus additional cost of doing up the show flats, um, then putting the budget of um, advertising, promotions, PR outreach, running seminars, filling up the show flats with interested buyers. At that same time, property agents are also supporting developers by reaching out to a prospective pool of buyers to get them interested. But post the first month of launch, everything then seems to go quiet because the budgets have already been spent. And if after that you still have 80% more units unsold, over the next two to three years as you construct, you have to sell them out because 
there's a time bar of five years from the URA on the controller of housing rules for developers to sell out if they wish to save on some of their taxes and duties. Now, developers can of course prepare for a relaunch, firstly by changing the decorations in the show flat or by reappointing property agents and then increasing their marketing budgets. But most of the time, as we have seen in the last two years, the crowd probably has moved on to looking at the next new show flat because there are 50 launches expected this year. So property agents and prospective buyers are going around shopping and comparing products. So if during the first initial launch you fail to sell well, then getting the interest of the market back into your show flat again would require significant second round relaunch efforts. Who do you think will still be buying this market? Is it the HDB upgraders, uh, the first time buyers mm. or the investors? I think in this market, we are mainly seeing uh, upgraders. We are seeing first time home buyers, of course, but first time home buyers are very much attracted to the incentives and grants of the new launch BTOs. And BTOs in the past 10 years have actually done very well in terms of design, in terms of quality of build. In fact, some of them have gone on to win international awards for their designs. Then there are other buyers who may be downgrading because of the aging demographics. Uh, the senior citizens may want to sell their older, larger size properties to move down into a smaller size, newer property where maintenance is um, easier. We still do see people who are buying for rentals, but they are realizing that rentals are not really increasing and the time between tenants as well as the quality of the tenants in the market hasn't been increasing in the last few years. So I think investors are probably adopting more wait and see attitude. So the main buyers would still be people who are home owners, owner occupiers, and their family situations may have uh, changed. The children are going into a primary school and they need to move near the school or maybe they have taken a job across somewhere else in Singapore and then they want to move due to the family's jobs or uh, situation. What are the factors we'll be looking into that will affect the future demand in the market? To predict whether future demand would be increasing strongly, we need to focus on the labour market reports, the wage growth reports. And if both the labour market reports are very positive and wage growth is also strong, that would naturally mean that population growth will have to increase. And with population growth going up, with more foreigners coming into Singapore to take on the employment that is being created, that would certainly drive rentals. And when rentals creep up, definitely then capital values will increase. So that would be a good signal for when we should start to enter the market to buy investment residential properties.